Zach, great to speak to you as part of Black History Month, which is an annual celebration of excellence across the black community. So I wanted to start by asking you about your idols, your childhood heroes growing up, both inside and outside of football. Who'd you look up to? Oh, okay. Well, inside of football um, was definitely Tim Howard, uh, playing over here for Everton, um, well, first Man United and then Everton, and um, playing with the national team. For me, playing soccer, he was, or football, he was, uh, he was definitely um, my favorite goalkeeper, just very athletic. Um, he was black like myself um, and just fun to watch. And then Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, Allen Iverson, playing for Philly, because that's where I grew up. Um, those players mostly, yeah. How significant were they for you uh, and also for the black community there? Because there's they're some huge icons that you mentioned there. Yeah, I mean, they're massive. Just like to have that image of kind of yourself to look up to um, when you're that young and be like, oh, wow, I could maybe do that. But I mean, they're like rock stars. I was going to ask you about that, what impact that had on you. When you see fellow black athletes achieving, you know, huge things on, on, on a global level, does, does that give you such, such hope going forward? Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's exactly what I'm trying to do with Voice Now, my mm -hmm. foundation, um, is to go into these communities and, and introduce myself and, and create a relationship with these with these kids and, and show them that uh, with hard work and dedication and, and discipline, um, like I said, you can r really the sky's the limit and, and you can do anything you want. Yeah, I'm going to speak about your charity in a bit because it's fantastic what you're doing. I just want to ask you, in terms of your journey getting here, you're obviously playing, we're at Man City now, superb training ground. Um, your journey from MLS and then you went Bundesliga and obviously Premier League, so how, how <coughs> difficult that was and, and the challenges that you faced over the way? Yeah, I mean, every chapter of life kind of has your ups and downs. Um, MLS was great. I love my time in Columbus. Uh, I got a lot of games in MLS, which was really good, good and important for, for me. And then I signed with City, which was very surreal when, yeah. it, when it first happened. Tell me um, about that moment when it first happened. When you hear that Man City and Pep Guardiola are in for you, what was your initial reaction? Yeah, I mean, it was, I thought it was a joke. Did you actually? I mean, I don't know. It was just very, I mean, yeah, very surreal. And, yeah, and, um, yeah I just couldn't believe it for, for a little bit. Um, and then when <clears throat> I came over here and, and checked out all the all the digs and everything and and signed, um, then it became a little bit more real, obviously. Mm. Um, so then, yeah, I signed and, and went on loan to, to Germany um, in Dusseldorf, and that was that was good as well. I got games as well, but um, unfortunately, I got hurt and, and only could play six months. Um, so that was tough being being injured and being in Germany. But I was lucky to have my sister. She was there living with me, um, which was really nice, and, and that helped. Um, and then COVID hit, mm. so we were kind of stranded there for like two months, a month and a half, um, just with each other, which was which was a blessing in disguise. Because if I was there by myself, it would have been brutally um, boring. Yeah, I was going to ask you about how tough that was mentally. Because obviously, you moved house at quite a young age, moved to Germany, obviously moved to England, mm -hmm. back to Germany from America. So, so how difficult were those challenges adapting to different countries and cultures? Yeah, it's definitely tough. Um, Germany, especially just because of the language barrier and, yeah. and culture. Um, I would say England, obviously we speak English here, yeah. you guys speak English yeah. here, so it's it's much easier to, to adapt here uh, for me. Um, and then the culture is um, a lot more similar um, than the German culture to America. And I was going to ask you as well about making it from MLS to Premier League, because it's not something a lot of people do, but it's a lot of American goalkeepers. It seems to be quite a position where we've seen a lot of goalkeepers in the Premier League. You've got the likes of Brad Guzan, Marcus Hanneman, Tim Howard, Casey Keller, uh, yourself. Well, why, why do you think that is, that, that it's a position where, where so many American players have made it uh, in the Premier League? What's that's the a secret? Good, that's a good question. Um... I mean, for me, I, pl I grew up playing all different sports. I mm. played uh, baseball, basketball, um, soccer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> still play soccer. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then I would play American football um, with my friends outside um, a lot. So for me, I was very for me, I'm very athletic, um, and I think playing those sports um, really helped my hand-eye coordination and, and all that stuff. So um, I don't know if the other goalies goalkeepers played. Um, other sports growing up, yeah. um, but for me that definitely helped. And of course, you signed your first professional contract. I just wondered at that moment how sort of influential that was for you. Did you feel like you had to use your platform for, for good and use your profile to, to help other people? Did you feel like you had a, a calling for that? Uh, well, like growing up, my mom was, was very big on on um, treating others how you want to be treated yeah. and, and um, just being kind and being nice and, and having a big heart. and. Um, 
And that's exactly what I want to do. Um, and I mean, she ingrained that in me, so um, that's the type of person I am. Now that I have this um, platform, I want to give back. Um, and, and I want to help the, the people who aren't as fortunate as me um, and, and don't have all the opportunities and, and support that, that I had growing up that got me to where I am today. You mentioned your charity earlier, Voice Now. Where did the inspiration come from for setting that up? And tell us a little bit about how that's been going. Yeah, so it was created um, after the killing of George Floyd. It's all about just using your voice and speaking up against um, <clears throat> racism. And and, um, and then it's it's all about, yeah, just giving back to the, the, the black communities. Um, who need support and, and opportunities, and, and and it's all about just giving them whatever the kids need in that city, whether it's books, um, Wi-Fi, uh, food. So we have over 150 athletes, I think, wow. that are kind of in our community and, and that have supported us. Um, mainly soccer um, players that I've kind of come across in, in my time. My fans and their fans and friends and family have been so supportive and, and um, with raising money and, and we've, we've made a huge impact so far. Where would you like to be in sort of five, ten years time? What would you like to see the future hold? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. Um, in five to ten years, man, I hope this foundation is still doing really well and, and raising money and, and giving back to, to the black community and these kids to, to give them opportunities that that I had growing up um, and, and the support and, and the belief that they can um, grow to, to be where I am today. Yeah, and of course you're in a team here full of superstars, full of world-class players, manager as well. I just wonder how often you have these conversations sort of that aren't related to football with the likes of Pep Guardiola and some of your teammates. Do you sit down and discuss racism and the need for equality and other off-the-field issues? Is that something that happens quite regularly? Well, I mean, I think as I think everybody does that in their own work. Mm. I mean, as as headlines come up and, and events um, in the world come up, I think everybody um, has those types of conversations, and we do the same thing here. And they're all very supportive of, of the work you're doing, I presume. Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, you know, they're great.